Okay gang, so in this video we're really going to make a lot of progress and get into the world of stereochemistry. I want to tackle a few definitions and terms that's going to be helpful along the way, but the big thing I really want to accomplish is make sure we're all on the same page of how to assign R and S to things that are called stereocenters. So the first word I want to kind of introduce and send your guys way is this word chirality. So we kind of hinted at it in the last video, but we, really, we didn't put a term to the kind of definition we put out there. So to be chiral, what that means is that if you have something and you took its mirror image, if you tried to superimpose them, aka put them all one on top of another, it wouldn't be superimposable. It would not work. So take my hands or your hands, for example. Right? If I took my right hand, my left hand would be its mirror image, right? So if I try and superimpose them and put them on top of each other, you can see that they don't match up, right? So my hand, my right and left hand, they're both chiral, right? You know, the mirror image does not match up with its opposite. Okay, so in the world of organic chemistry, instead of using hands, we're using molecules, right? So if we have a chiral molecule, there's going to be at least one, at least for our purposes, stereocenter. So here's where stereocenter is. A stereocenter, it's going to be a carbon. And it's going, to be, it's going to be a carbon attached to four different things. And here's what I mean. If I was to draw you guys this example, right here, for a, a wedged bromine, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen here, and then let's just dash an iodine over there. This is not a stereocenter, right? Because we are attached to one, two, three different things, right? Because we have two hydrogens. So this would be this carbon is not a stereocenter, and it is said to be achiral. On the other hand, let's just see if I erased that. And instead of an H right here, just for fun, let me just tack a chlorine on here. Just by switching that one thing, we now have four different atoms attached to this carbon right here. Now our carbon is, or now our, our molecule is chiral because now we have a stereocenter. Okay, so now that we've kind of shown you what chirality is and what a stereocenter looks like and how to identify one, I really want to get into assigning R and S. There's a few rules, but it's nothing you can't handle, so I'm going to erase some stuff and we'll jump right into it. Alrighty then. So we're going to do a few examples together, but do not worry, I have a ton of practice for you guys. I think I have three or four worksheets on stereochemistry, but I want to do a couple together and really nail down the rules of how to assign RNS. Okay, so to quickly peek at them over here, the first thing you need to do is actually find how many stereocenters you have in a molecule, because there can be more than one, depending on how big your molecule is. Obviously, we're going to start small. The next thing you do is you have to make sure that your lowest priority group is away from you or towards you. This one is going to be made more clear through more examples. Three, you have to rank your other groups. So basically, we're going to assign priority to the groups attached to stereocenters, due to molecular weight. So the heaviest molecules or atoms get the highest numbers and the lighter ones get the lower numbers. So you rank the groups attached to your stereocenters by how much they weigh. And then once you've done that, you assign R or S. But let me just show you with this example right here. Okay, so clearly this carbon is in fact a stereocenter because we're attached to an iodine, a bromine, a chlorine, and a hydrogen. So those are four different things. All right. So now we need to kind of see who's putting on the pounds, a.k.a. who's the heaviest, right? So we can see that iodine is clearly, if, if we had a periodic table, I just kind of know this off the top of my head, iodine is the highest, so I'm going to give him a 1. So he's the highest priority, first priority group. Okay, now we need to find the next highest group, next heaviest group. So that is out of bromine, chlorine, and hydrogen, that is bromine, then chlorine, and hydrogen's last, but we don't number our lowest priority group. Okay, so our lowest priority group is facing away from us, so number two is a check. We've ranked our groups. So now what you kind of do is you either make, you have to follow one, two, three, and kind of make a little circle as to which way those numbers are going. So it looks like this way, right? And almost think about if you're turning the wheel of a car, we'd be going to the right, right? So that means that this carbon is R. This stereocenter, that's his stereochemical configuration. 
On the other hand, if we were going to the left, even though we don't use L, we actually use for left, we use S. So right for R, S for left. Doesn't make total sense, but we'll roll with it, right? Okay, so if we can do that, you've already are 50% of the way to being an RNS master. Okay, so now let me kind of show you another example. Okay, so there's one stereo center in this molecule, and he is right here. Because we have a wedged OH group, a wedged alcohol group, I'm going to draw on the implied hydrogen. And then you can see we have, if you can think of it like this, attached to this dot, right, this dot carbon right here, our stereo center, we have just a methyl group, right, just a methyl group. And if we're going to look at this side, we have an isopropyl group, right? So we are different. So now let's kind of assign priority. Due to molecular weight, you look at the atom directly attached off of the stereo center, right? So out of all of these, this OH is easily top priority. Now we kind of have a little bit of a tie, right? Because if we look at this carbon straight off the stereo center in this methyl group, right? They're both carbons. So what do we do? Well, here's how you kind of break a tie. You look at where you've tied, and then you look to see what that atom is attached to, right? So this carbon right here is attached to a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. This carbon right here is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and then a hydrogen, right? So C comma C comma H. You can you go to the first group, and if you tie, then you keep going. But clearly we can see that this carbon is heavier than that H. So this isopropyl group is second priority. And this methyl group over right here is third priority. Our lowest priority group, hydrogen, is facing away from us. So we can go ahead, at, go ahead and assign stereochemistry. So it looks like one, two, three to go around like that. We're going this way. So again, it looks like R. Okay, but now I kind of want to tackle the situation where let's just see, if, let's see, let's play around with this. So pretend we're kind of restarting. And instead of that scenario, let's see what happens when I flip the OH and the H. Right? Let's see what happens when he's facing towards us. Right? So the priorities stay the same. Oxygen gets a 1. This guy gets a 2. And we get a 3. Okay. So 1, 2, 3 looks like R, right? Looks like we looks like nothing changed. However, you can only just straight up assign R or S if your lowest priority group is facing away from you. That's the convention. However, if it's, face, if, if it's facing at you, right, because we know that these wedges are coming out at us and these dashes are going away from us, all you do is you kind of look to see what it is and then you take the opposite, right? So it looks like R, but it's actually S. See how that works? So it's really nice when the hydrogen's either facing away from you or toward you, because if it's facing away from you, all you do, or whatever your lowest priority group is, you just number your groups, you go clockwise or counterclockwise, and then assign R or S. Also, if it's facing towards you, easy money. All you gotta do is look to see what it would be, and then just kind of flip and take the opposite. Okay, now I just want us if, as long as we can tackle this last little thing, then you are an RNS master and you should be able to go through the worksheets with not that much trouble at all. Okay, hold on, I'm looking at my cheat sheet. Here's the last scenario. What happens when we have the hydrogen not facing towards us or away from us at all? We kind of need to find a different strategy as to what we can do and how we can handle that. Okay, so let's see if we have this situation right here. Do we have a stereo center, right? Let's look at here, because we see some wedges and dashes. All right, we are attached to a methyl group, an OH, an alcohol group, a hydrogen, and then if you just look here, that's an ethyl group, right? Awesome. Okay, so clearly we know that the OH is the heaviest group out of all of these. And we also know that the hydrogen is the lowest priority group. So then we need to look to see, okay, 
Straight off of the stereo center, we see a carbon here and a carbon there. So what do we do? Well, you can see that this carbon is attached to three hydrogens, and this carbon goes on to a, you know, bond to another carbon, so he is the second priority. This carbon right here, he's third priority. So we can't even assign it all right now, because we are ha neither have this group facing towards us, nor is it facing away from us, right? So we need to kind of use a technique called the double switch. Okay, so if you were to flip any two groups on any stereo center, so if I flipped just say this H and this OH, it inverts the stereochemistry. So let's just say I had R here. I don't know if we do. If I flip these two, we would then go from R to S. But if I then took a different pair, let's say if I switched the H and the OH and the H was here, if I took the H and the CH3 and I flipped them, we would then go from R to S, from S back to R. So a flip inverts you, but another flip uninverts you. Do you see what I'm saying? So let's do a double switch. Let's switch the H and the OH first and see what happens. So that would give us, kind of draw us this way. So the OH goes here. The H is now a wedge. We didn't touch the methyl group, he's still a dash. Okay. However, we've now inverted the stereochemistry, so we need to flip one more time. Let's flip the H and the CH3. Because that also gives us back the original stereochemistry and puts the H as a dash. So let's kind of go this way. Didn't touch the ethyl group. OH stayed the same. The wedge is now a methyl group. And the dash is now a hydrogen. Okay, so now we still have our original stereochemistry because we did two switches. And now we have our lowest priority group facing away from us. So now let's keep our priorities. The oxygen was the highest, the ethyl group was number two, and the methyl was three. So if we go like this, right, looks like this type of scenario, and we know that's S, and sure enough, that is the stereo center's configuration. So as long as you remember the process of assigning RNS, if you can identify which molecules are the heaviest and then go down from there to see who's lighter, who's lighter, who's lighter, as long as you can figure out what your lowest priority group is, it doesn't always have to be a hydrogen, it could be something uh, a little heavier depending on what else is attached, but as long as you can figure out is he facing away from me, is the lowest priority group facing towards me, is he not facing either away or towards me, do I have to do a double switch, and then you can stay organized and then apply your rankings and then go either R or go S, stereochemistry is about as complicated as it gets right here. Okay, so there's plenty of practice on the first worksheet. You guys know enough to go do it. So I would get at that one. In the next video, what we're gonna talk about is we're still going to always be applying RNS in the world of stereochemistry, but another problem you'll probably face is someone might give you a molecule and another molecule, a pair, and say, okay, what is the relationship between these two molecules? And this kind of goes a little bit deeper of a level on stereoisomers. So we'll learn the different types of stereoisomers as well as delve into just a little bit of a topic called mesostructures. All right, see you guys in the next video.